all don't volunteer, so hey, the ones that do. <laughs> I'm the evangelist, I can say what I want. <laughs> all right, listen, I should have said that before I tell you about my CDs. Y'all ain't about no CDs, right? <laughs> Got some CDs out there for those of you that still do CDs. The worship CD is out there. My latest CD, Grace, which is a hit CD for me. Thank God for it. It uh, is a number eight on the billboards and just keeps uh, climbing the charts. So dope CD. That's out there. Hey. And then my book, 100 Keys for Your Right Now, is available for you. We give you the CD actually free when you buy. I mean, we give you the book for free when you buy a CD. So take advantage of that. And our bracelets out there. Some of you probably still got your Believer bracelet. I never take mine off. Hey. Things like that, really. I don't care where I'm at. I always have my Believer bracelet on. You can see me on TV, and you look for that bracelet. I'll, <laughs> I'll have it on. Uh, and it's a great witnessing tool. People always ask me what I believe. And when they do that, I say, you're going to go to hell if you don't live right. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's not the way to witness, right? <laughs> no. All right, let's go to our Bibles. Let's go to Mark chapter 4. And we're going to go to verses 37 through 41. I want you to get a piece of paper. I'm going to teach you tonight. Um, Pastor Al mentioned to me about you guys being on a series about ministry and being called to ministry. And I want to talk to you about that briefly tonight. We are on a series at our church entitled Just Do It. And it's all about faith. And I want you to know tonight that in order for you to be in ministry, you're going to have to have some faith. Come on, give me a hey right there. That was a little weak. Come on, give me a hey right there. Still a little weak for me. Come on, give me a hey right there. I preach better if you respond better. Hey. You want a dry message? You be dry. We're going to all be dry together. Hey. So you want to you rock it out? Let's rock it out. However you want it. Hey, Amen. I mean, you know, you got to be anointed to hear the word in order for uh, as much as the preacher got to be anointed to preach the word. So keep that in mind when, you, when you're up here. And you see these guys up here, and, never, and you never know when it's going to be your turn. So you can sit there with a tight mouth if you want to. The Bible says you can reap what you sow. <laughs> Come on, get with the preacher. Give me a hey right there. It ain't easy getting up here looking at your faces, amen? Amen. Do a smile check right quick. See if you're smiling. Some of y'all look like you're going through. Tell somebody I'm coming out, though. I'm going through, but I'm coming out. In Mark chapter 4, very familiar text. Y'all know the story, most of you. In verse 37, the Bible says, There arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that that it was now full, meaning water was coming over into the boat. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. Jesus sleeps on pillows. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, cares not that we perish. And he arose, and he rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, peace be still. Everybody just, the Bible says life and death is in the tongues. Well, would you just say that right now? Say, peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him. If you want to give this teaching a title, I would call it Faith for the Call to Ministry. Faith for the Call to Ministry. And I want you to know that many people have accepted the call, but few have accepted the faith for the call. I think nobody has a problem with knowing that they're called. I just think that we have a challenge with receiving the amount of faith that it takes to accept the call of God on our life. Because many of us do not use all of our faith. Some of us are walking around day after day, and we're using 10%, if not 5% of our faith on a daily basis. Some of you are in here, and I'm telling you, I can just tell by the way you worship, that you're not using none of your faith. But I, but I came to encourage you today. It's time to start using your faith. Come on, give me a hey right there. Let's go to Galatians. Those of you that know God has called you to minister, I want you to write these texts down. I want you to take notes. Now, listen to what Pastor is telling you this morning, because this morning, see, I'm all over the place. Listen to what I'm telling you tonight. I never thought in a thousand years I would be preaching, okay? I never thought in a billion years I'd be pastoring, all right? So when I tell you take notes, take them notes, because guess what you're going to need when God puts you in that place of ministry? You're going to need your notes, 
I'm serious. I'm talking to the least of these. I'm talking to the young folks. I'm talking to the folks that think this is a, you know, uh, he, he talked to the old people. No, I'm talking to you. You're going to minister one day, and you're going to need your little notes, and you're going to need a lot of them because Sundays come every week. <laughs> Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Very powerful scripture. Y'all should know this one by heart as well. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Paul said, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of God, the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. M write a note under that text. Notice that Paul doesn't say, I live by the faith in God. He says, I live by the faith of God. So what Paul is saying there is I used to preach a lot of this stuff wrong, and that's always good. That's why it's always good to get back in the word and study a little bit more. But notice that Paul is saying that I'm not preaching from or living from my faith in God, which is a challenge for a lot of us anyway. But what he's saying is I've learned to live from the faith of God, meaning the faith that I have is the same faith God has and that God faith lives inside of me. So I'm not trying to put my faith in something. What I'm what 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 I already have is already inside of me. Tell somebody I already got it. So write this down. Real faith starts with the God in you. Oh, you're going to be glad you came to church tonight. Real faith starts with the God in you. I'm going to prove it to you. Let's keep going. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. Now, you really need to write this scripture down because this is the fruit of the spirits. Okay? And this is something every believer should know by heart. And the Bible says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. I don't know if we have the text up anywhere, but if they did, if you have that text, if you could put it back up somewhere if you have it. But one of the things that I think we have surpassed, I think everybody, okay, leave it where you had it. I think everybody's cool with love. Everybody say love. How many of you know once you get the Holy Spirit, you can love people you don't like? Come on, give me a hey right there. Come on, before the Holy Spirit, I don't, if I don't like you, I don't love you. Hey, come on. Oh, if you don't leave me out there by myself, that's all right. I see how y'all are. It's all good. How many of you know once you get the Holy Spirit, no matter how crazy life can get, you'll have the peace of God that passes understanding? Amen? Would you shout with me? Say, it's a gift. How many of you know you can endure some things through long suffering once you get the Holy Spirit in your life? See, it's a gift, kindness, goodness. And look what's there. Well, look, at, look at what's there as well as the rest of the gifts. Can you see it? Can you see it? Faith is a gift. Faith is a gift. Now, how do you get it? You get it when you get the Holy Spirit. So when you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit in your life, you get love, you get joy, you get peace, and you get faith. It's already inside. So come, come on, somebody help me say it's already in me. Already. When you already have the gift of faith in you, you can operate and do all the things that God has called you to do. The reason why Christian people, the reason why some of y'all are struggling with getting in ministry is because you keep thinking you have to go get some faith or go find some faith or go grab some faith. But God brought me all the way here to tell you that you already... I thought y'all was going to give me a little. When I, when I rehearsed that in the hotel room, I, I saw it being a whole lot bigger. and a whole. I saw at least two people running around the church. I thought it was going to be a little bit more better than that. I'm going to try it one more time. You ain't got to go get it. You already got it. <laughs> Where the van went? I'm saying, they take a cigarette break? What's going on here? <laughs> That's when you hit the, hit the keys. <laughs> right, right? Write this, write this down. Every, uh, leave, leave the scripture up there. Write this down. Every gift of the Spirit is permanent. Ooh, that'll bless you all day. You came just for that. Every gift of the Spirit is permanent. Church, you cannot lose it. You can't get rid of it. He's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I may fall away, church may fall away, mom and daddy may fall away, but in every gift, God will never fail you. You could be in the outhouse, a crack house, and a whole bunch of other houses, but I'm telling you right now, God will never. 
And I need to tell you this while you're feeling good because there's coming a day or there are going to be some days where you won't feel that good. There are some days you don't feel like a virtuous woman. There are some days you don't feel like a mighty man of valor. There are some days you don't feel like a praiser. Some days you don't feel like a worshiper. But when you don't feel it, just know that it's permanent. Slap somebody high five say it ain't going nowhere. Ain't going nowhere. Let's keep going. Romans chapter 12. You can write it down and you don't have to turn to it. Verse 3. That's where the Bible says to every uh, man is given a measure of faith. Now, here's what I want you to know about that. And that is this. God gives each of us the same measure. Everybody say the same measure. When I go to Chipotle, don't judge me. I always try to figure out how they end up giving the same amount of chicken to everybody's burrito. I try to distract them a little bit in hopes that they would scoop just the, and it just never <laughs> seems to work. Somehow they figured out how to give everybody the same amount of meat. Now, you know you could pay extra if you want more chicken, but I try, you know, I'm cheap. Come on, somebody. I know I'm not the only one in here. I don't want to pay. So I always try to figure out, but they take that same scoop and for some reason, we all end up with the same amount of chicken. Can I tell you something? It don't matter if you're a black man, a white man. It doesn't matter if you're a Spanish man. It don't matter if you're a female male. It don't matter what side of the tracks that you were born on. It doesn't matter if your mama had a lot of money or no money. God took the same. Y'all ain't going to preach with me over here. God took the same scoop of faith. Well, some people say, well, they just got here. He gave them the same scoop. Some people say, well, you know, they ain't go to a Bible school. He gave them the same scoop. Some people say, well, you know, he used to be this, and they used to be out there, and she used to be this. He gave them the same. See, so you, know you know what's wrong with some of y'all? Some of y'all are still not, it's, it's kind of going over your head a little bit. But you're going to be driving home in McDonald's drive through and the Holy Ghost going to hit you, and all this stuff going to come in like a mighty Russian ring. <laughs> and just about the time you go to order that Big Mac, you're going to say, ah! I got what he was saying. Let's keep going. I know what you're thinking when you say that. I know you're thinking, how come it seemed like some people got more faith than others? How, cause it, how come it seemed like Sister So-and-So seemed like she got it going on, and I, feel, I don't feel like I got what, she, what he got? I know what some of you theologians are thinking. Well, then, if that's the case, uh, Pastor Javen, how come Jesus said to some of them, O ye of little faith, and uh, this one had great faith? So talk to me about that. Glad you asked. I'm more than glad to talk to you about that. <laughs> so last year, about this time, my birthday is next month. <laughs> Amen. I'll give you the address. You can... Ten and a half, you whatever you whatever God lays on your heart. Gold chains are back in, amen. You can <laughs> So last year about this time, uh some of my uh, uh folks from the church brought me an Apple Watch. Hey, you know you're doing good when they start blessing the pastor. Ain't a Rolex, amen, but it's an Apple Watch. It's great for me. <laughs> I'm grateful for my little Apple Watch. It'll be coming up. And I'm embarrassed to tell you, don't judge me, but I'm embarrassed to tell you that the only thing that I know how to do with this Apple Watch is to know the time. <laughs> don't judge me. It's been a year. My birthday's next month. It's been a year since I've had this watch. And, it put, it put, and the only thing I've learned how to do with this Apple Watch is tell time. And one of the young people came to me and said, Pastor, are you, have you linked up with me? Because I'm doing the workout thing, and you know you can sync your workout so I can know when you worked out, and we can kind of compare our workout schedule together. I said, who can do that? They said, well, you could do that on your phone. I said, on what? You mean my watch? He said, yeah, on your watch. You could do that on your watch. I said, oh, okay. They said, you know you can control your home theater with your watch. I said, what? 
They say, no, you know you can answer phone. You can answer the phone on your watch. You know you can text on your watch. And they started going through all these lists of all these things that I can do with the Apple Watch. Now, church, let me ask you a question. Do I need a different watch? Huh? It's not a trick question, I promise you. You can. <laughs> it's okay to answer. <laughs> Anybody else got an Apple Watch? Who else got an Apple Watch? Come here. Who else? Come on. It's not a trick. Just get up. Oh, y'all don't know how to do nothing with y'all either. <laughs> what else you do with yours? You got something else you do with yours? I track my workouts on mine. You do your workout thing? Yeah. You do something else different with yours? Walkie talkie. Yeah. You do something with yours? You got something different you do with yours? Is that an Apple? Well, you like me. Yeah, see, me and you on the same page. Our faith is real low. All right, who you watch? Okay, come on. You got one? Come on. That's what we need. We need a woman to represent us. What do you do with yours? What are some of the things you do? Uh, my activity, my exercises. And then I text and I call. And then I watch. Uh, sometimes I watch a, a, a movie. or. I, I, <laughs> I feel like you're trying to make us look bad here. I think... I feel like you purposely came up here just to show us how bad we look. All right, everybody, pull your hand out. Hold your uh, Apple Watch out like that. Pull your sleeves up so they can see it. Church, let me ask you, do we have the same thing? Do we have the same thing, church? We have the same watch. Do I need her watch, church? Do I need his watch? Do I need his watch? Now, I don't need their watch. We all have the same watch, but she's doing more than I'm doing with my watch. He's doing more than I'm doing. She's doing more. Church, the only difference between me and the rest of them is they did their homework, they studied what they got, and they began to work what they got. Maybe God is calling you to start working your faith. Maybe the only reason why you're not seeing great faith operate in your life is because you haven't gotten in the word like you need to, to study what you got. Tell somebody around you, it's time to start working your faith. You don't need a new faith. You just need to work the faith you got. Somebody shout, work your faith. Let me give you three things about the call of God on your life when it comes to ministry. Number one, write it down. You were chosen. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are. You were chosen. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 16 through 21, you did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, and fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. There are certain things that you're not receiving because you won't accept the fact that you have been chosen. Number two, let's keep going. You have been called. Number one, you've been chosen. I'm talking to everybody in this room. Number two, you have been called. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 3, the Bible says the Lord told Abram, leave your country, leave your relatives, leave your father's house, and go to the land where I showed you, and I will cause you to become the father of a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and I will make you a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. And I know you understand that we are descendants of Father Abraham. Therefore, we have the responsibility to have the same call on our life that we have been called to the nations. And not only have we been called to the nations, but we've also been blessed to be able to be called to the nations. Not only that, but we have protection and we have been equipped. So God calls us and when he calls us, he protects us and he equips us to do whatever he called us to do. You do not have to be afraid. Many of us don't want to walk in ministry because of fear. But I want to encourage you today that God protects his children. God will provide for his children. God will equip his children. Come on, give me a hey right there. Fear is not an option when it comes to those that have been called. You do not have an option to wallow in fear. Faith is a choice. I'll say it again. Faith is is a choice. You have to choose today to believe. There is no Holy Spirit that's going to come and possess you. Anybody tell you that the Holy Spirit possessed them? Amen. Take them to the crazy house. Glory to God. 
Jesus himself said, I, behold, I stand where? At the door and what? Knock. So if that's Jesus, how are you going to, Jesus and the Holy Spirit the same. So the Holy Spirit has to be invited in. Why do you think we sing these songs? We're ushering in the presence of the Lord without, trust me, you can put Victory Outreach out there on that building all day. But if they sold the building and put Publix or something else on it, it'll become something else. So the church is not the building. The church is us. And whatever we do in the space, it becomes the house of God. That's why the Bible says you have to enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. If you just come into a place that's called the church, but you have not put no worship or no praise in the atmosphere, there's no Holy Ghost. If you want the glory of God, which we call the Shekinah, that has to be invited in. How does it get there? Through your praise and through your worship. Don't you know that you get no credit for these people singing tonight? If you didn't sing nothing, you don't get no credit for that. Ain't nothing going to glory and say, well, yeah, you, well, well, you know, they did have six people up there. You can get a little percentage of that. No, you ain't getting nothing of that. <laughs> what you mean I don't get nothing? You don't get nothing of that. If you're standing next to somebody and they're lifting their hands and you're just sitting there and letting your mind think on the game or, you know, whatever, I promise to God, I don't care how much stuff you feel all around you. I don't care how much anointing. Being around the anointing don't more make you anointed than being in the gym going to get you in shape if you don't work out. Give me a hey right there. Some of y'all haven't said hey all night. I can see you. You realize that, right? I'm going to try it one more time. Give me a hey right there. Thank you. You got to put something in it. Don't you know two people showed up here tonight? You showed up and the Holy Spirit showed up. God's looking for something for you, from you. Say, Pastor, how are you going to say that? Jesus told the woman at the well, I, he is seeking. The first problem is why he got to seek. That's why I love to sing that here I am to worship. Let God know you're here. You say, Pastor, I don't sing as good as you. You don't have to. Worship is not about singing. Worship is not about singing. Worship is about the position of your heart. Don't you know that when you come to church, it's to worship the Lord? Don't you know all the other stuff is just fringe benefits? That is, you're not supposed to, I, I don't know what happened to this generation. We don't taught you that you come here and you get your marriage right. You come here, you get a big house. You come here, you get a new car. You come here, your mind at peace. You come here and God's just going to open the windows of heaven. You know what? Those are all fringe benefits. Those are all just surpluses of the blessings of God. But you were never supposed to come here to get no big house, to get no boo, to get no more money. You was all... Now I'm about to preach. You are always supposed to come here just to give God glory. Just to give God honor. And if that's just too much for you, then you're, you don't get what it is to come to the house of worship. The rest is just benefits. God wants a relationship with you. He wants a relationship. Can you imagine if somebody comes and hang out with you because they know how big your house is? Because they know how you roll, they, you, your, your private jet, you know, the, the food. And they come. How many know you can see somebody that, that's trying to use you from a mile away? Come on, hey. Come on, you're a good judge of character. You see them in the first five seconds, you know what you're dealing with, right? Amen? But on the same token, don't you know that if people have been loyal to you and friends and have been by your side and y'all have been in a relationship where you know they got your back and you got their back and as you go up, don't you want them to go up with you? Don't you want them to fly on the plane with you? Don't you want them to eat like you eat? Why? Because the relationship is there. See, that's what it is. When we get close to God and when we get close to his anointing and when we get close to his power and when he begins to use us in a mighty way, we just start getting all the benefits. Hey! But the purpose is to have the relationship with the Lord. Lift your hands all over the building and say, God, I want a stronger relationship with you. Here's the third one when you start talking about being called. Rejecting the call increases difficulty in your life. Uh, tell the piano player I'm ready. I'm just, I'm done. <laughs> it's a wrap. I told you we ain't going to be up here long. The main reason that some of us are dealing with some Challenges. Young people, this is for you tonight. There are certain things that you just can't do. I know you got swag. I know you got it going on. I know you fine. I know you got all that. All right. But you've been called. 
and you're going against the grain. And when you're going against the grain of the call of God in your life, you're going to have a lot of problems. There's, there's an interesting thing that happens when you meet the Lord. The things that you used to do, you can't do no more. <clears throat> it's hard. It's hard to go back to the club and enjoy it. You'll go in there and just be too loud. Too loud in here. <laughs> too dark. <laughs> Floor is sticky. <laughs> Now, that ain't never bothered you before. Oh, now everybody going to act like they don't know what I'm talking about. You're going to put me way out there. That's all right. Before you had a relationship with the Lord, you could sleep around. You could do all kind of stuff. That got too real for you? You didn't think, you didn't think twice about it. Now, when you try to do it, you feel like a brick sitting on your chest. Feel like you want to just end your life. But don't end your life. Repent. Just give your heart back to the Lord. Now, religious folks may get tired of you. All right, now you done been down here asking forgiveness for a while. All right, now you you know you're back out there again. You know, religious people, people don't have, we've never help me, Holy Ghost. People don't have what it takes to fulfill the void that only God can fill. Women, I know you think, well, as long as that, when I find a man, a man cannot fill the void that only God can fill. Men or a woman, she can't. I'm telling you, and that's why we have so many challenges in our marriage, trying to get somebody else to fill a, a spiritual void that only God can fill. Come on, say amen. Help the preach out. I'm way out here now. Way out here. You're going against the grain. You need to accept the call of God that's on your life. And you need to accept it wholeheartedly. And I know what you're thinking. My ministry and the way I talk, it's not like Pastor Miller. I don't know how to talk like that. I don't know how to sing. like the, I, I don't know how to do like how y'all do it. And God says to you tonight, don't you know I made different types of people? They're not in here. They're out there. So I'm equipping you so that you can go and reach the type of people that you can reach. There are some people that are never going to understand how I talk. But they will you. Amen? In our text tonight, we see Jesus get on a boat with 12 men to go on the other side. I've been to Jerusalem several times. The Sea of Galilee is not that big. It's more of a lake than it is a sea. And you know the story. The Bible says the ship begins to shake, and, it begin, and the water begins to come, come over in the ship. I'll make a long story short. They go down to wake up Jesus. My sermon, I preach it the way I want. I sleep on my left side. I felt like Jesus was sleeping on his left side at the time when they woke him up. Just me. That's what I see. It's hard for me to wake up out of a dead sleep. Maybe you can jump right out of bed and be happy and, and go lucky. But for me, I'm grumpy. Amen. Okay, give me a little bit of that. All right. So I felt like when they shook Jesus, when he was on his left side, sleeping on his pillow, down there in the boat, I felt like Jesus just turned around and gave him a look. Parents, have you ever looked at your children because they did something so stupid, you kind of wonder who child that is? You, can't, you don't want to hurt their feelings, so you can't call them, you know, you can't call them crazy or stupid or nothing. You just want to look at them like. If you have not done that with your child yet, you have not had any teenagers. But there's coming a day. I promise you, when that little cute little thing is going to do something. And you're going to look that thing in the face. And you will have no words. It will just be a look. It kind of goes something like this. And sometimes that look can last for hours. And I believe something inside that child that's innate knows that whatever they just did. Sometimes, how many know sometimes you ain't got to say nothing just by the look that mama give you? It's like, let me get up out of here. <laughs> I believe Jesus gave them that kind of look. Then he comes out, comes on top. You know the story. And he just speaks to the wind and the waves peace be still and everything stops and he turns around and looks at them like what is wrong with you? 
Now, I know Jesus didn't say this, but here again, this is just my verse. I feel like Jesus said, what's wrong with y'all fools? <laughs> I left the L off. I said fools. All right. Because what you don't remember sometimes is that they've already seen him cast out demons. They have already seen him open blind eyes. They've already seen him do supernatural miracles. But it's not until he calms the wind and the waves that they fall to their knees and say, what manner of man is this? Because to men in those days, anything that was godly controlled the world, the atmosphere, nature. See, children of Israel, parting of the Red Sea, God did that. See? So anything else could be mistaken possibly for a soothsayer, a witch or something like that. But Jesus spoke to the wind. And the way they say, oh, my God, this has to be. He's do he, watch this. He's doing the stuff that only God can do. This has to be God. See? It's not until he does this that they say, here's what I want to leave with you tonight. Jesus' only purpose in his ministry was to get the disciples to believe that he was deity. His only sole purpose was just trying. Don't you know he never did? He didn't have to spit in the dirt and make clay to heal his eyes. He could have just touched him. But well, why is Jesus spitting in dirt? He's doing stuff to get their faith to get to a level where they understand who he is. Amen? Didn't have, didn't have to wait till Lazarus was dead, but he waited. The Bible said he waited to the fourth that he, he wanted to make sure he was good and dead. <laughs> Wait till the whole crowd got there. And then what did he do? Lazarus? Come on, a big old show. Come on. Come forth. Grave clothes. See, all of that is just so you can build your faith. See, he's trying to get them to understand who he is. Remember the storm was raging and it was, and it was on the boat? Now, he could have went with them on that boat. He could have got on the boat. He didn't do it, right? He waited. He let them go way out there. And then what did he do? Come walking out there on the water. <laughs> Sometimes God will put you in a ridiculous situation or an impossible situation just so that he can show off in your life. Some of what you're facing right now, you say, how can God call me when I'm going through so much? And God says, that's exactly where I want you to be because I want you to see the miraculous. I want you to see the supernatural. I want you to see the manifestation of my power upon your life. Everybody's standing. God wants you to know that if you would just believe, you can be utilized in every area, in every assignment that he's called to your life. You have an assignment. Say, I have an assignment. You have a call. Say, I have a call. You have faith. Say, I have faith. Now, it's up to you tonight how you're going to begin to use it, how you're going to begin to tap into it. It starts tonight. I believe that right now you can begin to walk in a greater anointing. I'm going to ask everybody that's 30 and under to make your way to the altar. If you're 30 and under, make your way to the altar. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath. Come on, come on. Come on, lift your hands. Come on. We pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your bread in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, Lord. It's your bread in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out people just lift your hands all over 
God needs you today. God needs you right now. You say, Pastor, I'm struggling with this. I'm dealing with, dealing with that. God says, I already know that. And he said, I call you for right now. But you just have to surrender. You have to just give him your whole heart. Wherever you are right now, God don't want you to fix you. He said, if you give your heart to me, I'll fix you. He said, if you give your heart to me, I'll take care of that situation. Some of you are up here, there's some relationship issues that you've been worried about. There's some educational things you've been worried about. There's some financial things you've been worried about. Some of you are up here tonight. There's some things from your past that you've been worried about. And I'm telling you right now, God sent a prophet in this house to tell you that right now, let it go in Jesus' name. God says, I will take care of all those needs. God says, I will meet every one of those needs. That's for you. He says, he's talking to me. He's talking to you. God says, I will meet every need. If you will just pour your heart to me, God says, I will meet every need. I will take care of the love. I will take care of the resources. I will take care of the dreams. I will take care of the destiny. But you must surrender to me. Lift your hands as high as you can lift them. And let God bless you. Let his anointing fall on you. Come on, let God do it for you. You don't need a touch of man. It's a touch of God. Come on, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on. Come on, that's it. Press it. Press it. Come on, God's doing it. Open your heart. 